Hey everybody, I'm Joey and I'm here to talk to you guys about Ramda. I'm not going to open up with that joke anymore because no one laughed. <laughs> so what is Ramda? Ramda is just a functional programming library for JavaScript that you guys could all use to produce functional code. Now, we all know what functional programming is, so I won't go into the details of the benefits of it. But just know that Ramda provides over 200 functions that we can use to produce functional code. But if you guys don't want to learn it, or if you guys don't care, then just use lodash and underscore, which we are pretty much all familiar with. But like I said, please listen. Please. Because Ramda has some really cool features, such as currying, which I will discuss in the next slide. So what is currying? Well, let's start first with an example. In the example above, or to the left, you see a simple add function that takes in three arguments, a, b, and c. And it returns the sum of it. Now, if you were to call that with three arguments, one, two, and three, it would return six. But if you were to call it with two parameters, or, two, or one argument, then it would just return undefined, which sucks. But with currying, we could call it with any amount of arguments, and it would still run and won't give us an error, or undefined. So if you see below, constant curry as is equal to r.curry, that means that any amount of arguments that we pass into it will still return something. Now if you see below curry add, I could invoke it with one parameter, then another, and then another, or I could do two arguments and then another one, or I could do any which way. But it won't evaluate until all the arguments are passed in. If not enough arguments are passed in, then it will just return a function that waits until the rest of, it, rest of the arguments are passed in to be evaluated. Now, I'm sure you guys have seen this before. If you look to the right, you see a higher order function, add, that basically returns another function that returns another function that finally returns a plus b plus c. Now, I guess the benefit of this is that now that when you invoke it, you could pass in one parameter and that will just wait for the second parameter and then that will wait for the third. So add one, two, and three will return six. But if you were to just call it with one argument, then that just returns a function. And that just waits. So if I call that function again, add 2, that returns another function because there's still C that hasn't been uh, input yet. And finally, when I call it the last time, it finally returns 6. Cool. But what's the point? I don't know. Let's look at another quick example of map and see how it's implemented both in native JavaScript and Ramda. So the first line that you could see here is just the normal map function that we normally use. It's just an array with a function that maps over the array and it returns a whole new array with whatever function that we put into it. So here you can see that I'm just doubling each number within the array. Now the second line of code is Ramda. It looks the same except that Ramda gives us a multiply function that we could use, and the fact that data is being passed in as a second argument. Now, that's, there's no difference about that, but you don't have to worry about that. Now, let's say that you don't pass in any data on the third line, r.map, r.multiply. What would that return? Well, since I just mentioned currying and what it does, all that does is return a function that waits until data is being passed in before it evaluates. So if I were to use that line and I were to invoke it with some sort of array, that would return my transformed array, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. So what are the advantages? Well, functions will just won't be evaluated until all the arguments are provided. That's awesome. And because of that, data doesn't have to be passed in at any point in the time until the very end. Especially, this comes in handy, especially when you're composing multiple functions and you don't know what they all return. 
And finally, it allows us to use a point-free style. What this means is that you no longer have to specify that your function is taking in like a person or an array or an object and it's returning something, which leads to a lot cleaner code and is more reusable. So let's apply it to some real-world applications. Let's say that I query the database and got all the information in my items table. And now I want to implement some sort of filter feature. How would I go about doing that? Well, let's look at some examples. First, let's say I want to just find the description and the price of the item. And I don't care about the rest of the information. Well, Ramda gives that to us with this project function. Project just takes in whatever properties that you want and returns a whole array with just those properties. Awesome. And now let's say you're an avid book reader and you want to read a lot of books. So you only care about the books. So what can you do? Well, you could filter the array wherever the category property is equal to books. And that returns a whole array just with the books, which is awesome. And now let's say you want to sort it by price. So, you know, if a person or a user wants to look at the prices in order, that's easy too. You just find the prop property price, and then you sort by the values in that. Easy. Cool. Now let's get to some actual applications of it. What if you want to sort the books by the price? Well, if you take a look above, you see that sort by price and find all books. That's basically what sort books by price is, right? So you could just compose the two functions. And that means that, you know, find all books, you found all the books, and now you're sorting it by price. Very easy to read, and all you have to do is just compose the two functions. Now, let's say that you want to find all the items that are less than 50 bucks because you're broke and you don't have more than 50 bucks. That's easy too. You just look at the property price and you compare it to $50, as you can see in the inner function, less than or equal to LTE. And what's awesome about Ramda is that if you don't know what you're passing in yet, you could just leave it empty and you could denote it by underscore underscore. I hope you guys see that because I barely see it. And then finally, you're just going to filter all the items that are less than 50 bucks and return a whole array with those. Cool. Now, what if you want to find the books less than 50 bucks? Well, you already found all the books and you already wrote a function that takes all the items that are less than 50 bucks. So you could just compose those two. Easy. I hope. And finally, what if you just want to find the cheapest five books? Well, that's easy too. You sort the books by the price, and then you find the description and the price, and then you take the five, first five. Oh, and then now you want to find the sum because you want to buy these books. <laughs> Easy too. First, find the cheapest five books, which we already have in the code above. And we're going to take the price property and we're going to put that or map that into a whole new array with just those prices. And then we're going to reduce it using an add function. And that would return the sum of all those books. Now, if you guys don't believe me, then I'll show you some demonstration, quick demonstration. These are all the functions that I wrote, and I will just console log a few of them just to show you that this is actually working. Okay. 
All right, good. So as you can see here in my command line, I hope this is big enough. If not, then I'll zoom in. The first function is finding the books by the price. Now you see that all these books are all these items have the category books in them, and they're all sorted by the price from lowest to greatest. Cool. Now the second function that I want to show you is the books that cost less than 50 bucks. That's easy too. Which, why did I open another console? Did I, just, did I just get rid of my console? All right, sorry about that. Now, if you see here, all the books that are less than 50 bucks is displayed. And wow, you get some pretty cool books. <laughs> Anti Sit Masa. All right, cool. Nice books. All right, next one is the cheapest five books. And here you go, same thing. But you're only getting the description and the price. So cool, you get a book called Anti, Vestibulum, Sit, Masa, Et, and you see all their prices. And now finally, if you want to see the sum of those, that's easy too. And there it is, 93 bucks for those god-awful books. So, what is the point? Well, the point is that with Ramda and its auto-occurring feature, it allows you to simplify your code into these single argument functions, which makes your code a lot easier to read and to reason about. It also follows a declarative style type of coding in which that, you know, it's different from imperative where you're saying, okay, here I have a for loop and here I'm going to do this in that for loop. Instead, you're saying sort by the price, then find all the books and then combine or find the sum of all the books. It's very easy to read and that allows for less buggy code. And yes, functions are reusable. So any of those functions that I described in the example, you could use them at any time. And finally, the disk keyword does not exist. Thank God. I don't have to worry about binding. I don't have to worry about context. I don't have to worry about getting an undefined in my code, which is awesome. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you guys for listening. I hope no one was sleeping. <laughs>